Hello all, welcome to TechVSS. In this video, I will talk about six popular API architectural patterns. So they are uh, RESTful, SOAP, GraphQL, gRPC, WebSocket, and WebHook. And I know that most of us uh, have used RESTful for sure and SOAP also. Uh, but I think we also need to know about other protocols for uh, these uh, patterns, right? Uh, because sometime in the interviews, interviewer might ask you. So, uh, and also in, in the last column of this slide, I have mentioned the key attributes of each and every uh, pattern. But I will not go through that right now uh, because uh, uh, once we go through the each and every pattern in detail, then we'll be able to relate to this uh, these attributes uh, in a better manner, right? So let's start with the first one, that is restful uh, uh, pattern. So REST uh, pattern we uh, we must have used uh, because whenever we need the uh, CUD operations, right? So we we define the methods like uh, post and delete, get, right? So uh, and so these are the various methods uh, which are utilized by REST, and it's mostly resource-based API. So right? So every data model we we think it as a resource-based, and then our URLs are also resource based, right? So, and it uses the standard protocol of HTTP. Uh, so it's very simple. Uh, if you talk about the benefits of REST, it's very simple and easy to understand and use uh, because it is having just a few methods and using the standard protocols of HTTP. So it's easy to use as well, right? And then uh, it follows the rules of the web and use existing uh, protocols and standards. And uh, it is fast and can support multiple uh, requests uh, because uh, the caching uh, is, is utilized and also uh, it is stateless uh, so that uh, the uh, every transaction or each transaction is independent of each other. So it is uh, fast because it is using the caching mechanism and also it is stateless. And it is also using uh, the various formats. Uh, JSON is the most popular. Uh, but XML and few others also utilize. So, and if you talk about the drawback of REST, uh, the main drawback of REST is that there is no uh, clear cut uh, contract or schema defined. So, sometimes uh, that makes it unclear or inconsistent uh, when, as a consumer, you want to consume uh, those APIs. And also, uh, it doesn't support the uh, complex uh, queries or operations. Uh, so, uh, it means that you might need to call the APIs multiple times to get data which you need for your application. And the main usage of REST is that there is where like when uh, you need high speed and high scalability, and also the data model is very uh, simple and stable. So at at those scenarios, you can use REST at a very uh, at a very good uh, use case, right? Uh, let's see the second one. Second one is the SOAP, uh, SOAP pattern, right? Uh, SOAP pattern is uh, is known for using the XML messages. And the main attribute or main uh, thing about SOAP is that uh, they use the very uh, strict or predefined schema or contact with, with applications. And also uh, because of uh, uh, that, right? Because of the strict uh, schema, uh, it sometimes becomes very complex and verbose as well. So, I mean, uh, the, the main uh, takeaway from SOAP uh, pattern is that it uses the XML uh, contract and defines a very clear cut uh, contract that ensures the interoperability and compatibility uh, between the client and, uh, I mean, the, between the client and the uh, server. And also, uh, the main benefit uh, is that it also supports the complex queries. Uh, and uh, there are a few things, uh, for example, uh, transaction, security, authentication, also inbuilt in SOAP. Uh, in terms of uh, financial data, uh, this is a good uh, protocol to be utilized. And then the main disadvantage of uh, SOAP is that it is very complex and uh, verbose to understand because uh, it is having the very complex XML schema. And it's, there is no flexibility as such. Uh, so. It's, it's difficult to modify the uh, contract uh, and between uh, the various uh, servers or clients, so that it, it makes it a bit difficult in the in those terms, right? So let's see the third one. 
third is the uh, GraphQL. So GraphQL is just not an architectural pattern or style, but also a query language because uh, as a developer, you must have uh, felt that whatever data you need to uh, show or uh, require for your application, right? Uh, you need to do multiple calls, right? Because sometimes uh, you are overfetching data or sometimes you are doing underfetching of data, right? So those overfetching, underfetching issues we always face. But when you use the GraphQL, uh, it gives you exact data what you need, right? So that's why it's also a query language. And the main benefit of GraphQL is that it works with every uh, is any server language or frameworks because it has its own uh, schema language. Uh, so that's why uh, it is like uh, uh, it can be used with any uh, language or servers or framework, right? And also it has a single endpoint uh, which makes it more efficient with than REST uh, because in REST we have to do a multiple calls to get the data. Which is required by us, and uh, the main problem is uh, with the graph uh, GraphQL is that it is a, it is it has like a very steep learning curve because it is a very complex and hard uh, to use and understand, and there is no support for caching, so that's why uh, there is a performance hit uh, as well. Uh, and the 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 main usage of GraphQL is that when uh, you your data model is a bit complex and dynamic and uh, and uh, and you want to make sure that there is no uh, you want to reject the fetch data which you need in your application, right? Uh, so let's see the next one. Uh, next one is the uh, GRPC. So GRPC is uh, basically a modern high performance and uses a protocol buffer. So you can think of GRPC as something uh, which is used uh, for the streaming applications uh, such as uh, Netflix. Uh, and also, it is a good a pattern uh, where you have immense inter-service communication requirement, right? So at that time, uh, you can use GRPC. And the, the main benefit of GRPC is that it has a clear and strict contract, uh, which ensures the interoperability and compatibility between these services. And it also supports the uh, complex queries and operations, uh, such as streaming, uh, bidirectional communication, authentication, and uh, encryption, right? And it also uses the uh, fast and efficient uh, formats, uh, which are binary in nature, and also the protocols, uh, which uh, are like a bit faster than others. The main the main issue with GRPC is that it's also having a very steep learning curve, uh, and also uh, it's difficult to understand in, because uh, it requires generating and compiling protocol buffer files that are, that are used as a buffer uh, for streaming applications. And also, uh, it has its own custom headers and methods. Okay, so it does not use the normal principles of the web for standard uh, protocols, right? So that's why it is having its own uh, custom headers and protocols uh, that make it uh, having a steep learning curve. The main usage of uh, GRPC is in the uh, applications where we need streaming such as Netflix. So that is the way it is mostly used. Next is the WebSocket. So WebSocket, you can think of a chat application. So whenever you need a real-time bidirectional and consistent connection, which is persistent, right? So we use WebSocket because in chat applications, uh, you need a connection between the clients uh, so that they can talk to each other at any time. So uh, it is uh, perfect uh, for live chat applications and real-time gaming. And the main benefit of WebSocket uh, pattern is that it is a faster and more efficient than HTTP because uh, it uses only single connection and it doesn't, it doesn't require any headers or cookies for each message. And, and the main thing is that at, at the same connection, it can send uh, the handle the text or binary or streaming of data. And it can push data from server uh, without waiting for a client to request, right? So it basically enables the uh, single connection, real-time event-driven communication, uh, so which is suitable for these chat applications. And and the main uh, uh, the drawback or con of this pattern is that it's not supported by some older browsers or proxies that do not understand the WebSocket protocol or upgrade the header. And there is no security uh, by default, like it doesn't use any uh, 
encryption or authentication pattern as such. So, but the the main usage of WebSocket uh, pattern is uh, in in the in the chatting, gaming, or streaming applications. So, it's mostly suited for that. Then the last one uh, we have the webhook. So webhook, you can think of something uh, like some events are happening at server, right? And server want to notify the client back. So basically, uh, webhooks are a way for servers to send messages to clients when something happens. If there's some event happens and client is bothered about that event, then they can notify using the uh, uh, post request or like HTTP callback site. So uh, what happens is that client registers uh, their uh, webhooks with the servers uh, with some uh, URLs which are predefined. Then if there are some events happening uh, for which a client is, in, client is interested, then, uh, then those events are sent back as a payload to the client, right? So basically you can think of it as a uh, event-driven and asynchronous operation uh, based uh, pattern. And main benefit of webhook is that it is very simple and easy to use and understand and follows the standards of HTTP methods and formats. And also it follows uh, the principles of web uh, and also it is uh, very good uh, for the asynchronous communication. So, and also very scalable and performant. The main, uh, the main uh, issue or the drawback of the webhook is that it does not have a clear or strict contract. Okay, so it might uh, sometime uh, lead to the uh, ambiguity or uh, inconsistency between the clients and servers. And also, it cannot support uh, the uh, complex queries or operation. Also, uh, handling is poor. Uh, but the webhook, you can understand that it's like a use for the event driven or like uh, event uh, are sent back to the client. Uh, so that's why it is uh, utilized as a synchronous uh, uh, pattern. So now uh, we have understood all the six patterns. So let me again bring back that slide which we saw earlier. So now I think it will make more sense. So I know that it is not easy to retain all the all the uh, all those things they said in the video. But my 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 point is that you should remember the key thing about the pattern. So whenever uh, you hear a pattern name, you should remember the key attribute. So what you can think uh, that if uh, RESTful is there, you think as a resource base, right? So because it has all the URIs as resource base and use the standard protocols of HTTP. Then uh, for SOAP, it is uh, like having the XML based uh, contract, which is very strict, uh, so that you can remember in that way. GraphQL is something which is very good uh, for the query language. Uh, so if you want the, uh, the exact fetching and you don't want any overfetching, underfetching, in that case, use the GraphQL. And for gRPC, suppose you want to have some buffering services or like streaming services, so for that, you can use gRPC. And for chatting applications, chat or gaming applications, you can use WebSocket because uh, they provide a single connection uh, between the client and uh, uh, server, and they can also uh, send the uh, uh, like uh, text or binary or images, whatever, in the same connection. And WebHook is something which is asynchronous uh, for event architecture. So uh, if uh, there are some events which are happening at server side, and you are interested uh, for, for that, you can expose the webhooks and you can listen to those uh, those events as they happen. So these are the uh, like a few key popular API architecture patterns. So my aim was to make you aware uh, of these patterns. So thank you uh, for watching uh, and see you next time. Uh, if you like my videos and if they're helpful, even 1% uh, uh, into your career or interviews, uh, please uh, subscribe and share with your uh, friends. And also, if you have any question on and uh, you want more clarity on some topics, uh, please put in the comments so I can make videos. Also, I can reply you uh, on the chat itself. Yeah, thank you.